Hello everybody, this is Luca Barcellona. Uh, I'm happy to meet you also uh, in this way, not personally, but I think we can share some thoughts and some uh, of my experience in uh, design, of course, but uh, as you may know, uh, I'm specializing in lettering. And since I am uh, here in lockdown, like many of you, uh, I hope not for a long time uh, more, but uh, since I'm here, I'm in my home studio. It's not my common studio, the, the one you you probably saw uh, several times in pictures. Uh, I want to share some uh, behind the scenes, let's call it like this, uh, some mm, backstage uh, images and thoughts about my work in cover design. So uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, start uh, showing you uh, what I normally do and why I, uh, I'm passionate in record covers, but uh, I'm passionate in lettering in general. And uh, as you may know, I started uh, uh, working uh, with uh, graffiti and of course uh, uh, the, the, the freedom that you have when you um, make a project for graffiti, a, a simple sketch, and, 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 uh, and you train your eyes to uh, translate these small sketches to big size um, walls. Uh, trained myself to uh, have an, a particular eye to the shapes and how to uh, handle it and in big surfaces. And in the same way, I, I've been a lot uh, uh, specialized in tagging, so street, let's call it street writing. And I developed my personal style in, in street writing and tagging. These are a few works from the past, let's say um, 10 or 20 years ago and especially I discovered that this tool can be useful for text but also for classical calligraphy because it's based on this, the same kind of mechanism behind uh, a tag is uh, is what is behind also uh, ancient letter forms. This is a Gothic B and is made with a marker for, for tags. Uh, the concept be, be behind the uh, chisel pointed tools is the same that we use for tagging and modern calligraphy. Let's call it street art or cholo writing or uh, anything else is related with street writing. Many of, of, of the people, uh, especially when I started doing calligraphy, didn't realize that you can make classical letter forms with really modern uh, tools. So this bring me to me uh, a, a new energy to make a research in handwriting from classical with uh, uh, letter forms. Uh, mm, this is a italic letter forms made with a chisel pointed uh, cap for spray cans. Um, this is about proportion as well. When you work with big letters, we, you don't realize uh, really what, what you have uh, uh, in front of you. Uh, you, you can see the, the whole thing, but you see uh, just one big letter, so just a detail of a letter. So you have to be uh, able to see what you are focused in and where is the whole thing that is not the same uh, of working in your studio with small sizes. So this is a few of my experience in uncommon letter, uh, lettering on walls and big surfaces. This is with Revelink, Revelink again in Prague. And this is uh, some of the big lettering with brushes, with levels, uh, I mean layers of uh, writing over, tools for writing uh, on the floor i discovered there's a tool for that and uh, again big size letters with very classical style this is roman capitals and i shown you these things before to start with record cover design and and go deep in the in the matter because uh, 
as you as you can see here, you have to study the, the classical letter forms to find a, a new way to write it. This is, for example, in Moscow, I think it's 2011 or 10. Uh, I didn't have the, the chance to make lines here. It's for four meters. So you have to find a way to balance the writing without make a formal writing properly. And this uh, uh, encourages you to create your personal style, I think. This is more uh, classical fracture Gothic letter forms with a brush, always a, also in, in big sizes. And here again, some performance with personal style developed during uh, the performance itself. It's, uh, it's something that uh, mm, train you also to see the letters as images. This is very important. And what I do when I try to find a lettering or to uh, uh, find the, the right letters for the, that purpose, that project for a record cover, to me is not about uh, writing to read something, but is writing to create an image made of letters like this one here you're seeing is uh, wall painting in Bologna. First of all, is an image. Then you go with an another layer. Uh, and if you want, of course, uh, in the, the next layer is legibility. So the content of the image. So you can see how many times uh, it, it's very uh, attractive what you see, but it's not very legible because it's made uh, um uh, freely and in with a lot of improvisation you have to be able also to uh, make mistakes of course design for music is a little bit different and we need to start from this room that you you can see here and uh, it's part of my collection of records so uh, collecting records uh, first of all is a kind of a disease it's like a drug <laughs> but it's one of the best drugs I know. First of all, uh, I, I never talked I'm, I'm losing my money or my time in this. I always discover something that goes into my job. Also now that we are, I'm talking to you and showing you, uh, if you're interested, of course, what's behind the, uh, this passion, of course, it's part of my job and my job, uh, itself it's part of my life it's uh, the good and the bad <laughs> to to make something that uh, it's your passion that becomes your job so i cannot especially in this period i cannot separate my life to uh, my job uh, it's of course uh, always part of that and i like records because it's physical thing and i know how much uh, now, in these days, it's very important to have digital tools to connect with the rest of the world because we are locked down in our houses. But it's also super good to rediscover uh, what you have in your house. So take that book that you never read and never look at uh, with attention and take also these records that you never listen to because of course I DJ as well and when I take the records to, to make a DJ set uh, if I don't have time to check the records uh, I notice that uh, I take uh, the, the record I'm sure are good to be playable but in this way you lose something hidden in another record that you never listen to and uh, the cover art of collecting vinyls is part of the game. Uh, I've drawn several CDs covers as well, but uh, and of course I'm, I'm, I'm born in 78. So I started with vinyls when I was like a 10 or 11. I started buying vinyls, then cassettes, then CDs. And for my, uh, when I was a teenager, the CD and cassettes was the, the media we were used to, to buy. Uh, but uh, I don't think you can appreciate uh, 
a, a record cover and his artwork, it is a good artwork, um, better than a vinyl because of the size and most of the time because of the quality and the experience of something physical. So this is uh, uh, some of the records I uh, I took picture of uh, in some. This is I, I think this is Prague. Uh, it's around the world. Every time I make pictures to some covers, sometimes I buy the records, sometimes not. But I'm always oh, this is incredible brush writing on a jazz cover. Still incredible brush writing, incredible lettering, uh, very simple. But this is letterpress, uh, uh, Argentinian jazz from the fifties. Uh, this is from Argentina. I don't know this guy, but the lettering is. Crazy good, and it of course all this lettering inspired me in my work. This is uh, from uh, an exhibition. Uh, let's call it an exhibition, but it was actually a concert in in Rome uh, with a with an orchestra, and was about the Italian soundtracks. That was uh, and is one of my big passion in record collecting. Because of a lot of these records I, 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 I did is inspired to simple colors um, and of course handmade lettering or letterpress lettering. I try to put something that is uh, completely uh, craftsman stuff. It's completely handmade, uh, especially in letters. And uh, the treatment I like uh, are very simple and uh, with a big impact. So every time I, I try to uh, do this, when I, I make a project about the record cover, I try to listen the new, to the music. Not every time is possible. And it's very uh, different if you work with a, a big company or a, let's say a, a big uh, uh, record label like Universal. Many of these are made for Universal or with a small company. And it's also very different if you work uh, and you can speak directly with the artist, with Nina Zilli, for example. Uh, she's now a very famous singer here in Italy. And I, I drawn the, 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 the logo for the, the, the first album. I did not the cover as well in Giuliano Palma. And I did the cover of this other project. And I remember, especially the first time I talked uh, a lot with her and uh, and as well with Cesare Pico, which is a great piano player with Casino Royale, with Marrakesh, with Giuliano Palma. Uh, these are all friends and uh, it's very special to speak with them about the project. For example, I remember with Giuliano Palma, we, we were talking about the cover of a uh, uh, McCoy Tyner uh, classic uh, jazz album and there was this lettering with with the, with the cuts on the, on the letters so we, we took inspiration from that uh, if you look at the cover it's not similar but the lettering mm, comes from there so now I'll, I will start to show you some project where behind uh, there's always an inspiration and um, I don't do it this uh, very often, but I'm very happy to do it because uh, what you create is never something that you really invent. It's part of your process in your, your, your culture, your background that comes from your passions, what you collect, what you physically uh, take in a flea market and you, you look at it and you're happy you paid a few dollars for uh, something that for you is a treasure and everything you like i think uh, if it's really a passion uh, and it's not made just for your job but it when i mean you know when it's something that you really like you you would uh, work on it also at night uh, in vacation because it's something you like you you want to do you don't have to do uh, I think all these things are like uh, folders in your brain that opens when you are creating. Sometimes you don't know where these shapes come from, 
but it's for, of course part of your background. So this is, for example, Casino Royale. Uh, they give me freedom, total freedom to project this uh, 10 inches. So it's a small records with uh, a couple of songs with Mikey Dread from uh, The Clash. And uh, it, it, it's uh, the, the project itself, uh, uh, um, the full project was about uh, uh, a reggae version, basically, rock steady. Uh, it's called the reggae session uh, of their classical pop or uh, songs. So this artwork is uh, simply a a show off of several styles you can uh, use together to uh, write in the titles and create in the same time uh, uh, an image made of the, the songs. Uh, sometimes you don't realize it you, because if you have a record cover in your hands, uh, if you are not trained, you don't see some details that is uh, lettering is, is handmade that comes from a script I face. Uh, you must be able to see the difference. And this is what I often teach to my students. You have to be able to see, not to do. It's not necessary to make lettering or calligraphy, especially for those art director we are forming at Raffles uh, uh, in the courses of visual art or for example, it's very important, uh, and I, I discovered how to uh, to share these thoughts because I, I don't want the the people that study the visual design are able to write, but uh, through the experience of handwriting, understand why why is the a detail is so important and why it's so difficult to make this. It's a it's a proper job and maybe they have to call a calligrapher to uh, solve an issue about lettering, for example, or a specialist in type design. Somebody who really has culture of, and, and passion, of course, of lettering. So this is a detail of a lettering that became the title of Esterno Giorno. This is a compilation of unreleased songs Italian songs uh, for film music, and it's a compilation, so it's not it could not be uh, just an image from a movie, but it it's uh, music taken from several movies are released from the vaults, from the archives, and there's a concept. The concept is esterno giorno, outside in the morning. So, the floor of Rome, San Pietrini, this kind of stones, a woman smoke, this kind of warm colors. It's like an impression and the same I did for Esterno Giorno d'estate, the colors that reminds you to the uh, to the summer, but that they're all, also this uh, remind to the smoke, so something that is groovy, jazzy, uh, not contemporary because it's from 69 and 78. Uh, so I treat the image in this way, for example. Esterno notte, outside in the, in the dark. So the, here I imagine for me what, what is in Esterno notte. I imagine myself into a car looking at the, at the glass uh, when it's raining outside uh, by night. So this is the image. It's, like a, an abstract painting, but it's just a, a crop from a, uh, a picture. Uh, Esterno Notte Volume 2, so I just, I, I, I kept the same lettering, of course, because the people, when, when you buy it, you have to recognize it's the same series. I like the, uh, for collectors, it's very important that the, uh, the series to uh, collect in every numbers. And here is a there's a uh, inspiration of something gothic, something made by brush, so not particularly clean. And I put the Nosferatu image to increase this idea of uh, 
something that is really tall, um, really vertical, like Gothic is. So it's a concept that is related with uh, fear in somehow. Fear is the um, the concept uh, that I want to express if I do uh, a lettering in this shape. So very very uh, narrow and very tall and this is the lettering i did for the external not the jazz can you see the the word jazz here is uh, particularly uh, high and very tall and let's say illegible in somehow but you can read it actually so it's a mood that uh, must uh, mm, bring you in, into the uh, mood of the music. Uh, this is a kind of lettering uh, with us, especially I, I here I, I, I selected a couple of covers uh, with uh, uh, a treatment inside the letters. And these are uh, African uh, designs for made for illustrations, uh, clothing. Uh, I founded a couple of sketches to explain you with this mood uh, how I created what was in my mind when I created this color. That is, it, that is Africa Oscura. is a uh, project that I really like because I, I, I put here, as you can see here, uh, there's a frame made of this African. Um, texture and then I put this kind of lettering like a like it's a stone lettering uh, uh, really primitive and it's afro dark electronic percussion so it you have to imagine what kind of music it's inside here before to listen to it that's the the goal of a record cover and uh, I cannot decide it decide if it works or not, but normally uh, the commission uh, screams it. This is it when when you show them the right cover because the com the com the commitment in this case is Four Flies Records from Rome. Um, I think every client, also the, the small clients, especially. For the small, the small clients, I think. They have uh, in their mind uh, something, but they cannot explain. So you as a designer uh, have to solve this issue and uh, your visual must be what they, ca they, they cannot express and what the music cannot express just with the music. So it's a relationship between this. This is about uh, uh, some covers and I want you to put your attention in the collage. Many times they, they use this kind of collage with very big head in the background and then uh, something really small with not perspective. Uh, mm, the composition is made uh, cutting directly from the photos. So everything was analog. And uh, I really like when something like this hand and this um, this finger is going over the colored parts of the cover. It, this was very limited. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the media you have uh, was not the computer, of course, so you, you have to, to make the best with very few tools. And, it makes me laugh, for example, this Baleari Operazione d'Oro. The Baleari has a really small and strange uh, gun here be before the B. And especially this man that is cut, but probably is important in the movie, but why is cut and just ticked uh, here in this position on this image? It's very, very strange. Um, and this kind of collage attracts me a lot, uh, especially for the change of sizes of the actors. And I use it for this, that is Debito Caniogale. Of course, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Italian comedy, so I use different color, different sizes, 
and I use the, the brush as a background and I simply re-draw uh, and digitalize this lettering that was completely incredible and perfect for this movie is the original lettering. Uh, most of the time the author of this lettering in the movie posters, especially in Italy, I mean, uh, was uh, unknown and uncredited, but I think it's super good because this reminds you to a pepper prout, like a like a chili, and uh, you know this is the <laughs> the hand language, the body language we use in Italy to say something about the situation. So you immediately think about the the, the kind of uh, the movie, what kind of movie it is, what kind of music it is. It's amazing music, of course, made by professionals. And I hope that people, when when they see a cover like this, laugh a little bit and they also say, oh, look at what a cover, I want to buy it. Uh, I know that is not for everybody. I know that is every, this is everybody's taste, it's my taste. Uh, but I really like it, and I, I, I believe that the people can perceive your passion when, when you when you do something like this, and uh, that you really are inside in, into these things uh, to appreciate it, to uh, give back the, the same spirit of the originals. This was an exercise I did one day in my studio. Um, I made also wallpaper for, for this, uh, but it was not for a particular project. I just tried to make a city using uh, strokes of my brushes and my tools. And I think uh, it was a uh, kind of writing uh, the city, writing a skyline and not drawing it because it's simple gestures. Everything is a small gesture of the brush or, or the tools. And when they gave me, when they gave me Urbanistica, this kind of cover, it's a library, I used a frame for the, the cover, it was really appropriate for, for this project. Uh, this is another project that is called Sortilegio. It's a movie that is not uh, available anymore. Uh, I mean, it's never been available probably because they they lost or they destroyed the, the original tapes. So what we have is just a few of these um, analog pictures. The actress is incredibly, incredibly uh, beautiful in this image. And these are pictures from the movie, but it's impossible to see the movie. So we have the pictures, the, the schedule, here's the, the original schedule and the soundtrack. So, when I had to draw this cover, I, I put this face, her face is looking to something uh, probably scary, um, but uh, the, the, the feeling I had when I was drawing this cover, that some, there's something scary in, the, in this movie, but nobody can see it. So she's looking at something that we actually cannot see it, she's not looking at us to us but uh, she's looking to something that we will never see as as a movie so it represents my situation and everybody's situation when we approach to this movie this kind of lettering of la venere selvaggia is uh, typical of the uh, B movie, let, let's call B movie. Sometimes are B movie, sometimes don't. But it's very typical of these kind of posters from the 60s and the 70s. And I use this the same styles for Giornata nella per la riete is an Ennio Morricone uh, uh, unreleased uh, in, uh, at, at that time on vinyl. There was a a recent reissue, and this is another reissue. I took the original artwork and. Uh, combined with other parts of the artwork with a, uh, another lettering that made exactly for this poster. In, I used uh, several times in the past, not, now a little bit less, but uh, I was into 
letterpress print and these are typical uh, wood types and I use food types to make the cover of Carnet Turistico. This is made with a brush and here is uh, a, a composition that goes uh, in the front and in the back cover um, with C and T. Uh, everything is from uh, real uh, analog uh, letterpress uh, letters, uh, hand pressed on paper. Un urlo dalle tenebre. This is a one of my recent discoveries. Uh, it's an unreleased uh, original soundtrack by uh, Giuliano Sorgini. And uh, this is the final cover I, I did. There are there, there is a lot to say here, but the, the, the first thing I want to talk about are these that I really had um, fun to make the the label because when you put the vinyl on the record player you you have the hole exactly on the in the center of the eye so you put the record in this way and you literally cut the eye in the in the middle and this is a composition and we come back to this kind of collage with not uh, a typical and a proper and exact uh, perspective and this reminds to this kind of uh, artwork from the past. These are uh, the inspirations. Of course I realized that I, I, I was thinking about this setup uh, when I draw the letters but here is more like a Tetris you know is more like a combination of spaces and small uh, words and big words and directions made by the letters itself to make a compact image. There is something more. I was putting in inside the, an image, but the image was not the, the what I, I really wanted. I want something more hidden to discover and I talked about this cell bus design, it's made all with dots. So I, I try to imagine uh, the image made by dots. Uh, a close friend of mine uh, helped me in this, uh, in this work to have exactly this effect. So I have to make a shout out to Nicola Peressoni, aka Dimo, for this. Because you cannot see anything here, but you can realize that there is something from here. So this is the image taken from here of the eyes with this expression inside the title. But you don't see it immediately. You see it when it's far from you. So I imagine that somebody can discover this uh, uh, listening to the records and looking at the cover from the sofa and at a certain moment uh, realize that there's this image inside that's an, it's something scary um, this is another record for uh, four fries records wrong and i did just the lettering not the cover this is the the lettering selection the the, the layouts i did and we use Noda because of the, 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 uh, this is for the LP and this is for the CD. We use different images, but I think this uh, was, uh, yeah, reminds you to that kind of lettering uh, of the sexy uh, comedies uh, from the 70s, 80s, early 80s in Italy but it's not so explicit. It's, it talks about uh, shapes, shapes of the body, and we founded a kind of a logo that fits especially in this, uh, in this artwork. This is Il Dio Sotto la Pelle, another recent cover, and this is uh, the original poster was so big, it's a really, really big poster. I, I took the pictures and then I did everything uh, digital 
uh, had to, to to make the artwork from the beginning and convert it in uh, simple colors. And uh, this was the material I have in my under my eyes. Uh, so a few posters. So I tried to to take, for example, this image to use it for the background. This part of this poster, this part of the Indios. Uh, to make uh, elements that are useful for the cover. This was the previous cover from Right Temple. And this is the final artwork, the inner, uh, the, 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 the inside of the gatefold with uh, the image you've seen in, in the poster. And I did a new lettering using no curves at all here. And this is the background and, uh, and the original artwork reused. So it's kind of uh, mm, half and half. You have to respect the, the original artwork or um, transform that in something mm, in a combination between your what, what is your taste and uh, uh, respecting the original artwork as well. And of course, must talk about the the movie because it, we we are talking about soundtracks as well here. So after this, I want to show you uh, some lettering did for friends. Uh, this is what you do when when you work on a logo. You you try to uh, mix up this the, the the logo with images of the group. This is the first sketch I did and uh, pencil sketch again. And I remember I did several mm, tests for this. I worked for a couple of months and at the end, as often it happens, they decided to come back to the first one. So several times the, the first shot is the best one, but you want to explore new and different solutions. This is the final logo. So I removed the uh, several flourishing or uh, connection between letters, ligatures that are was not uh, so important. This is the positive and the negative and another version of the same letter. As, as you can see, if you have in your mind with the, 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 what you want from the pencil sketch to the definitive artwork, this is made for, with Illustrator, it's very few work. Uh, I mean, it's just a technical work. The sketch is very important because it's the first visualization of what you have in your hand. This is a hand lettering for a record cover, handmade as well. It's a collaboration between uh, me and Magna, who did the rest of the cover. This is another cover. It's not about uh, um, a record cover. It's a. It's a actually a book cover but it uh, i decided to put it in this presentation because it's very important i, I did several lettering for this but this was uh, in this color with this kind of uh splattered uh, shapes and drops of ink uh, was perfect for this image of boogie who did a lot of street uh, photography especially with uh, criminals or you know uh, this is gang related uh, situations uh, i think this is in sao paulo so the the lettering itself speaks about what can happen with somebody that put a gun in your face these are uh, lettering uh, from uh, Italian soundtracks again. La Vita Agra and Congo Vivo. I think this kind of lettering inspired me for this artwork. This is the original uh, plate I used for the foil stamp. This is the foil stamp. And of course, there's a relationship between these styles. So can you, you can see here. Uh, this is a record cover I did for a group, uh, but it's a repress of a famous record, um, famous rap group 
it, this artwork uh, is uh, from a few years ago, but the original record is from the 90s. So I did the cover, uh, asking the guys for uh, the original pictures and was analog picture. I scanned the picture, keeping all the, 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 the frames as it was uh, uh, in the original. I did a, simply a tag with a marker and I put this type that it, I think it's a, like a, a typeface from the 90s. I don't remember exactly what it is, but uh, I decided to make the cover as I did this in the uh, 90s. So I probably, at that time I was not using the computer, so I, I and I was a graffiti writer, so I probably uh, my solution would be to make a tag and put a, a, a typeface with, in somehow, uh, probably with just paper and glue, and put the, the photo. So it's not an artwork made with my head uh, in this age. Is I, I tried to force myself to be a designer of the 90s. What instrumenti programmi usi prevalentemente per post produrre i tuoi progetti? Uh, basically, I use uh, to for post production. I I, I try to have uh, the artwork done on on paper, and then I scan it and I use Photoshop uh, in design. Very few time I use the Illustrator because I I'm not into a lot into vector design, uh, but uh especially with brush lettering uh, i don't suggest to use uh, uh the, the the auto trace uh, or this you know this kind of uh, um, tools to uh, transform what is uh, analog into digital so these are the is the background uh, of the numero zero um, we took a, a, a physical photo of the microphone with the cable on uh, the stage of a on, on a real stage. So initially, we wanted to keep all these these things uh, as part of the stage with a, a lot of uh, feet uh, that came over. So it's ruined because of the the, the steps of every singer and every. A musician that comes on the stage. Then we uh, we added to the lettering I did in the middle that uh, originally was uh, like a you know the, the 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 crossbar to identify a zero and recognize it from a, an O, for example. And we added this, which is the uh, very important thing because it's. Uh, um, Yes, I, I stopped interrupting uh, for, to, to check the, the questions, but uh, they are sending me the questions directly on the phone, so I can answer you, okay? Um, so this is the, the, the poster shows just a part of the zero, and you can see um, this element that talks exactly about what happens when something uh, 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 is born, okay? So this is why uh, we added this element here. Uh, another lettering, this is very uh, classical, I think. Uh, the, the classical work uh, you do with a pen and ink, and I use it uh, for this artist because it was changing his way to to write it was more like a uh author not more as a rapper uh, as a musician so i use this because i wanted to give an impression of somebody who really takes to uh to go in, in another direction compared to the other rappers and more into uh personal and intimate writing uh some questions 
Cosa consiglia chi vuole lavorare nel tuo settore? Quali sono i valori che hai imparato di porti dietro? Uh, first of all, uh, I consider myself as a, a craftsman, but also an artist. So I, I don't suggest to be like another artist. Find your own way. Uh, my suggestion is to start uh, from classical letter forms and then find your own. There's a lot of confusion. For example, in uh, Instagram, a lot of people discover with social networks calligraphy and they think that the calligraphy they see from an artist like me and other, uh, other artists that do, does lettering, that's calligraphy. No, that's our work, personal work. So you, you, you have to find yours. And uh, this, I think this is a bit um, misunderstood of this time, but it's not just for calligraphy, it's for every field. Everybody shows his own work and uh, people try to imitate that. We did it from books, uh, from all calligraphers, but then we discovered uh, immediately that you have to uh, have your sound. Let's talk about this. Where do you see your career in five years? <clears throat> Well, mm, I don't think so much at the future. I'm not so focused on the future and it's what drove me into happiness with my job. Of course, I always try to see new things and where there's a space for me. Uh, so I use the lettering not just for record covers, but for a lot of purposes that uh, needs communication and communication is images and letters so text and pictures wherever there's, there is text uh, i can i think i can give my contribution <clears throat> it's a matter of uh, take uh, take uh, opportunities and say yes i can do this it's something new i will learn something new I will make mistakes, but it, it's a, a, a great uh, um, stimulation for uh, creative people to uh, dive deeply in something that you know and discover new people and new way to work. At the end, you, you do your letters, but maybe with virtual reality and I discovered uh, lead handwriting, the gestures are the same, but I think it's very interesting when you have uh, new tools to make the same gestures, for example. Uh, the best project you have done? I'm, I'm very proud of uh, choral projects, like uh, the one I showed you before. C'era una volta Roma was a big uh, concert, and mine was just a big, a, 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 a small part, but a, a big contribution. And it's amazing. I, I can imagine when you are part of a movie stuff and you see the movie. You're just a small part, but very important. So uh, I think the best project are the one uh, where which we are involved with your other incredibly talented people and you learn something new, especially about uh, the, the human aspect. And professional, of course. Uh, come organizzi la creazione di una cover di un genere musicale a te lontano? Ah, per esempio, for example, I, I, I didn't, I never did a, a cover of a, a genre I don't like at all. Uh, but it's just, uh, I, I can answer you approach professionally. So as a designer, you don't judge the style. You, you judge uh, if the cover you are doing as a designer, as an artist and a designer, of course, but in this case more as a designer. So you, you take your ego and you put it in the lettering or in the solutions, <clears throat> but at the end you must be happy and also the client must be happy. So this is the designer approach, not the artist. I do this, you take it, and that's it. No, you have to talk and try to have, have a, a solution for him. Not something you, you like or he likes, but that both, both people likes. Um, funny curiosity. Have you ever 
had any legal problems after tagging around the city? I ask you because I know that the world of tags and graffiti is not always seen as an art, but simply as scribbling the walls. Uh, of course, I had it. It's part of the game. Uh, but I don't feel any difference between uh, the hand lettering I do in the studio and uh, graffiti writing. It's part of what I like to do. <clears throat> it's part of my story and many other designer story, but because many other uh, uh, graphic designer or visual artists comes from graffiti, skateboarding. We have this kind of common culture. I was talking with a DJ, uh, Lele Saki, a couple of years, uh, a couple of days ago, <clears throat> about the project we have to do together. And we discovered we started with skateboarding, both. He started in the, uh, it was affected to <laughs> skateboarding world in the late 80s and me in the early 90s, but we had the same passion. So you, if you was about that, uh, uh, you, you were into that kind of uh, subcultures, you probably went in, in, in the same uh, places, met the same people, the same culture, so graffiti, hip hop that was starting in the 90s, the, the end of, uh, about skateboarding, the end of hardcore scene uh, replaced with, uh, with the other kind of cultures, graffiti, hip hop. Um, so um, it's something that it, uh, sticks to your uh, way to see the letters. So you cannot compare a nowadays artist from, with an artist of another age because of the influence. They are completely different, but you have to know the history. So it's better that you know about the previous artists that made something great in your field. You cannot ignore it or even worse, copy from them and don't say it, like taking uh, comments on your Instagram, like, uh, oh, this is mine. You know it, It's a, you, you have to be honest with yourself. And I think uh, very often I, I share my, as in this situation, I share my um, inspiration and also the people who inspired me. <clears throat> your life is full of great goals. Have you ever talked about your career in the music world compared to the current one? Do you have any regrets? No, I still do hip hop. I write. Uh, I don't make concerts anymore. Somebody of you maybe knows what I did in hip hop scene uh, in Italy. I, I'm in contact with a lot of uh, hip hop artists, of course, uh, but I don't, I never seen myself comfortable with, on a stage, even if I did concert, so I decided to quit. Uh, and uh, honestly, when I was into graffiti I, uh, and I discovered calligraphy and then graphic design, I was listening to hip hop and I, w I was doing music, but I never seen myself uh, at 50 years old make, making music, especially hip hop music, that I love it. But, I cannot do it uh, as a, as a, when I was in my twenties, of course. So now I I'm happy of the choice I did because I I can see myself at sixty or seventy years old as a designer, not as a rapper, of course. Uh, but in somehow, and as you can see here, this is a nice skinny record cover that is based on uh, uh, typical Japanese. Uh, uh, record covers with this OB, that is a, the stripe. Uh, the collectors know very, very well about this because we did this cover in uh, 2014, I think. And now it's very popular in hip hop to collect records with OB, with this stripe. And its value is uh, really high when there's a hobby on it. So I think we anticipated this fashionable thing. Another record cover is for Kill Feel. Also here, you, you have immediately the um, uh, 
the feeling of uh, something splattered, and of course it's related to Kill Bill. Uh, it's a mixture of drawing and brush lettering and a lot of hours uh, at the computer, of course. And I want to keep some secrets as well. I in programma workshop una volta finita la quarantena. Ah, uh, this was a big issue to me uh, because I realized that a lot of my, a big part of my job is to stay with people. So workshops, but also we have Salone del Mobile, the Fashion Week uh, or the Design Week in, in Milan. I'm often involved in this and this is disappeared in a minute. So I'm, of course, I'm thinking about online classes or work with something that permit me to stay at home. Uh, of course, I can see the, the moment, uh, like many of you, to uh, stay with people uh, again but i'm just back from mexico uh, on march and i really had a um, bad moment because i i thought i cannot come back uh, to italy anymore <laughs> so i think i will stop for a while to travel uh, even because i i don't know if it will be possible anymore of course i want to teach if teaching in a classroom is, is not possible anymore uh, for now, uh, I think I, I will go online as I, 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 many people is doing. It's not my first choice, but it uh, makes sense, makes sense in this moment. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, we can close here. This is uh, the last image uh, I've shown you. I had many more, but it depends how much we talk on every image. I hope uh, uh, you discover something about my job and the, the job of uh, collecting and drawing record, record covers. Um, I think the, 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 the most important thing is the passion. I, I, I said this uh, word uh, several times because it's very important. If you don't like what you are doing, the people perceive that you don't like it. And they perceive that is not your cup of tea, let's say like this. So I think uh, the uh, what you could learn from this kind of meetings is do what you really like. The people will appreciate uh, if you really like it, they perceive it. So uh, don't do what it, it, you think is good for uh, commercial use, but you don't like it because the people will see that you don't like it and the result will be affected by this. So uh, I think uh, I can say hi to everybody and I hope to meet you again uh, in person. Uh, thanks to Raffle for this opportunity. Thanks to Francesca who organized the, the call. I hope you will be free very soon and we can uh, enjoy this beautiful spring and summer is coming. Okay, bye.